Uh, Monsieur Gustave is a concierge in a, a managerial position. He's a manager in all but name, but he wears a concierge's uniform. It's, and the setting of the story is a sort of loosely early 20th century, anywhere between 1900 and 1935, but it's a sort of, it's a sort of melange, a melee of different uh, ideas and, and influences from that period um, through, I think, the, the sort of a conduit of various Hollywood films of that period. And he's, a, he's very precise. He loves uh, a, a perfume called Eau de Panache, a cologne. Uh, he is not shy in um, favouring or, 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 or showing attention to older ladies, wealthy older women, um, who may or may not pay him, but we feel they might. But uh, he's a very good concierge. He, has, he runs the hotel brilliantly. Um, and I think they say he's vain, needy, something I can't remember, but, but he's, he's actually, in the essence, although he is a little bit vain, and um, but maybe slightly uh, precise, and over precise, fastidious is the word, I think. He's a very fastidious person, but he has a, he has a strong ethic, has a strong principle, of, which is rooted in how you serve people, how you look after people. Wes's films, I think, have this quality of a wonderful, comedic, idiosyncratic lightness of touch, unusual sense of humour, which actually is holding within it very strong, serious themes and, and quite serious emotions, in fact. But uh, I think Wes's films have an unusual blend that no one else can repeat. It's, they come from Wes, they come from his, his imagination, his sense of humour and his perception of the world and his perception of history and whatever it is that you know that goes on inside West finds its way into the kind of film he makes. I thought he was brilliant in it. I thought that he had was a wonderful naturalness in front of the camera. He was wonderful to play with. Uh, I think he probably grew in confidence during the, or very quickly grew in confidence actually, within the first two or three weeks. He was incredibly prepared and knew all his lines, dead letter perfect from day one. And he was uh, fun to, to, to hang around with. And he was also very good as, as, as Zero. He has this a wonderful quality of, sort of intelligent innocence. Um, so he's innocent but he's not dumb. He's smart, very smart in fact. And uh, I think Wes has created a wonderful relationship, these two very different individuals who, who bond closely over the course of the picture. The Grand Budapest Hotel was created in the German town of Görlitz. There's no, there was no sound stages in this film. There, was no, there are no sound stages in Görlitz. It's all location work. Well, there were two great locations that served the movie. One was this old shopping mall built, I think, in the early 1900s. With, uh, I don't know what the right architectural term is, Art Deco or something. I don't know quite what it is, but it's anyway, early 1900s. Now, it is not, not functioning anymore as a shopping mall, but uh, the production took it over, and the interior of that shopping mall has become the interior of the hotel. So it's one huge atrium with balconies at different la layers going up, and off those balconies they put the doors of various rooms and staircase so it was all made to be the lobby of the Grand Hotel and it was beautifully designed. I think it is a wealthy cast of characters I mean I think anyone looking at those act all the actors in this would I hope be envious that they've got um, Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton, Edward Norton, Willem Dafoe, Jeff Goldblum, um, Harvey Keitel, uh, Owen Wilson, Jason Schwartzman, as you said, uh, the wonderful Saoirse Ronan. Uh, so, um, and very much an ensemble feeling and some wonderful German actors in the smaller roles. Uh, so, um, so, and, and Wes and writes to create a sort of ensemble feel, so we're all staying in the Kurlitz and all, most of the actors staying in the same hotel, so we saw a lot of each other. <laughs>